I am waiting for recording. Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture. I hope you are doing well. This is the lecture of week 10 and today is 6th of May 2020. We have live online lecture and I think the students are adding to the lecture. Yes, enough. Therefore, we can start. Let, let's get started now. You see the cover page of the lecture first. Let me go to the topics. Today, we will see the wave theories, different wave theories the concepts of that, the basis of that, the main equations, and we see what, how, what, uh, how is the mechanism of the wave progress to the shoreline from sea. And also, we see the application of British Schneider equations for different conditions, and some examples for application of different theo wave theories. Therefore, uh, if we wanted to review the wave theories, let's see the wave mechanism and wave theories. Wave mechanism and wave theories, including classification, governing equations, uh, what more I said, and then different wave theories, such as some of them are named ARE or first order theory, Stokes can be second, third, fourth, or fifth orders. You will see what are they. These are mainly for, um, for example, deep waters, and ARE can be for deep water and shallow water. But we have other wave theories, stream function, conoidal, solitary wave, and trochoidal wave theories. That, for example, you can see later which one is for shallow water, which one is applicable for deep water, and which one for transitional water. We divide waters by water depth values into three categories. Shallow waters, transitional water, and deep waters. And each of these theories is very good adapted with some condition of that. We will see that, how we find which one is good for which condition. And you can find a complete uh, descri description, equations, applications in my book. My book that uh, I gave PDF to you, I, I think, if not, you can download from internet, you search my name or the name of the book, and then you can download that free of charge. I put PDF there. Therefore, the name of the book is, for example, design of uh, Offshore uh, coastal port and offshore structures engineering, you can find that. Or searching my name, we can find that. And the keywords of coastal, offshore, you can see my papers and my book. Therefore, we can refer to that book. And also, there is a very complete book written by Turgut Sarkaya and AL, they, are, they have given very detailed uh, formulation, everything there, which can be used for more information. But if you follow my lecture, our reference book that I gave you, the lecture note that I gave you, I think is enough. But for more information, you can uh, go to them and find more information. As a general statement, 
all emotions can be determined by differences between water particle velocities and pressure. Therefore, always the difference and changes between velocity of wave particle and pressure, V and P. In function of its position can be X, Y, Z, and also time, T. Therefore, it depends on what is the location and what is the situation for different functions of x, y, z, and t? You can find all the motion things that you want, parameters that you want. Velocity, acceleration, movement, displacement, everything. Vertical, horizontal. If we want to classify the main equation, the basic equations, the basic equations governing of hydrodynamic C motion are two. They are continuity equation, that it's called Laplace equation, and the second one, momentum equation, which is called Bernoulli equation. These two equations, these two main basic equations, give us everything and we can model and simulate the wave motion. In all cases, the fluid is assumed to be incompressible. Therefore, we consider that the volume of the, for example, uh, some part of water will not change with any pressure, with decreasing, increasing, they will be considered constant. And we consider that it is in the seat. Therefore, it's not like honey is very busy. It's in the seat. You can easily, the molecules of them can move on each other and they are not bound the stress with them too much. It's assumption. And we call that irrotational you will see mathematically what is the meaning of irrotational del fourth pi equals zero that's very famous in the for example fluid mechanics or fluid hydromechanics we defined one phi function which is called the potential function so that the negative partial derivatives are in them or the phi in different direction x, y, z submit the water particle velocity therefore velocity equals minus you will see that partial differential of phi over in function of time and let's see and um, uh, in next slide, see one profile from the motion mo movement. In this uh, slide, you will see the profile of wave. The coordinate x, y, z is shown on that, and also some parameters like water level, seabed, and some other parameters like amplitude and also one mm, particle of water is considered and in particle is said as we said all the motion of the sea is defined by the changes between pressure and velocity therefore if you consider in one side we have pressure and velocity condition one in the other side, we have the increment of pressure added plus, it's very easy, we say around P over round X, instead of say differential equation, uh, differential uh, equation of P, uh, pi over in function of X, etc. I say round P over round X. And times delta X, what is delta X? Delta X is, the dimension of the 
element in x direction plus and for u u is added by some term which is round u over round x times delta x so this is for x direction for z direction similar equ uh, equations we have and etc therefore you see that here the mean sea level this is mean sea level and this is the profile of the and the height of the profile of wave in any moment from here to here or maximum is defined as amplitude we have here you see this is amplitude which is in the a theory we consider h over 2 but in the stokes and the other theory is not h over 2 now we see two basic equations that we have as i told you the first one is continuity continue which is called laplace equation it has one for example differential form equation like this and the second one is momentum equation which also is called Bernoulli equation. I think one student joined us. Let me accept him. Jean Pierre, okay. Therefore, if I uh, continue, you see that, and in the Bernoulli, as I mentioned, its relation between all time its relation between the p pressure and u velocity in horizontal in vertical in in other horizontal x y and z direction these are the velocities in there and i told you we have defined y phi function or potential function that you can see in these these equations therefore by applying boundary conditions seabed and the also the sea level or surface level and for seabed and also we apply one phi function that phi function is not easy to find but is given by different theories such as airy has given one uh, phi stokes they have phi and the others second fourth third etc and therefore we don't worry about why because for the if we know which wave theory we have we can uh, have that one here i wanted to show you just one example and the others you can find in my book or you can find by turgut book or U.S. custom, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, for example, course of engineers book. In reference one and two, first one mine, my book, and second one is both of them my book. I have written two books, one of them 2001 and one other 1981. You can find there, and you can find the internet easily by searching my name and the, some keywords in. Uh, offshore, coastal, like that. And Turgut, Sarkaya, you see the complete sets for different theory methods I mentioned you. Therefore, as an example, just example, such given for stokes 
the second theory, wave theory, you can find in the reference mentioned the following equations. For the potential function phi, you see, for because it's second order, we have two terms. One term, two term. We are adding by one sine plus sine. If it was third order of uh, wave theory, we had third terms, three terms. If it was fifth, we had five terms adding. It is very long. Therefore, for easiest in the Stokes theory, which is second theory, you see two terms, and this is the height of the wave profile, and the other parameters as vertical and velocity, horizontal in one direction, the other direction, all because this is second theory of Stokes that has two terms. One here and one here and so on. You imagine that for fifth order of Stokes theory is very complicated. Just I want to show you the forms of the formula and you can see later more. In this slide, we see the assumptions made in developing the linear wave theories. If we wanted to review the linear wave theory, which is uh, a re theory, linear wave theory is a re wave theory. <coughs> These assumptions are used. <coughs> Sorry. The float is homogeneous and incompressible. Therefore, the density B is constant. The other assumption, surface tension can be neglected. The other one, Coulis effect due to earth rotation can be neglected. I am sure that you have seen the Coulis effect in dynamic. That is very interesting. When something fall down, it rotates around that. And it's very, very interesting thing. That's this effect. And due to earth rotation is neglected. The pressure at the free surface is uniform and constant. These are the assumptions. The fluid is ideal or inviscid. We don't consider the viscosity. The part and the particular wave being considered does not interact with any other water motion. They are acting separately, this assumption. The flow is irrotational so that the water particles do not rotate. Only normal forces are important and shearing force are negligible. This is the conclusion of that. Only normal forces. And then the shear forces are naked. This is considered bed is horizontal. At the in the fact it's not horizontal, but for short distance you can consider horizontal. For long one not, but doesn't affect too much. Uh, and fixed because. Actually, it's not fixed because we have sedimentation. We have the movement of the sediment, but it's negligible. Imperable and then boundary, which implies the vertical velocity at bed is zero. Therefore, on the seabed, you consider vertical velocity zero is clear. The wave amplitude is small and the Waveform is invariant in time and space. Waves are a plane or long crested. We consider it as two dimension. We consider this wave as two dimensional wave. For example, we have X and Z, horizontal and vertical. We don't consider the Y. 
Okay, with this assumption, the linear wave theory that we apply give us in the in general 95% precision is very good. Just five percent plus five minus five percent error it has. Therefore, it's good for application. In general, terms we can apply. But for more, uh, for example, exact solution that we want or more correct solution for offshore structure, we use mainly a Stokes theory, a Stokes second, third, fourth, or fifth. Now let's review and see more about the linear wave theory, which is called ARI. Why linear? It has one term as the, uh, and you see that equations are linear, but second order or fourth, fifth, third of Stokes, they are not linear. The most elementary wave theory is the small amplitude or linear wave theory, which is called a theory. This theory is developed by Airy in 1845, something about, I don't know, 18 years, huh? 85 years ago. No? Yes, 85 years ago. Is easy to apply and gives a reasonable approximation of wave characteristics for a wide range of wave parameters. A more complete theoretical description of wave may be obtained as the sum of many successive approximations where each additional term in the series is a correction to preceding terms when we're adding some terms like uh, stocks i told you for some situations waves are better described by these higher order theories stocks fifth order which are usually referred as a finite amplitude wave theories. Therefore, we have classified here in general in two. One is a small amplitude or linear, the other are finite amplitude wave theories, which is uh, referred by May and Dean and Dalrymple in 1990. Also, there are limitations to its applicability. The linear wave theory can still be used, provided that the assumptions made in the developing this uh, simple theory are not grossly violated. Therefore, we apply if we, we see the assumptions is adopt with our condition, we can use them. Now in next slide, let's see more about the condition of that. The first three assumptions are valid for virtually all coastal engineering programs. Therefore, you should not worry about that. It's necessary to relax the fourth, fifth, and sixth assumptions for some specialized problems not considered in this uh, lecture. Or the manual that I gave in the people or the papers. Relaxing the three final assumption is essential in many problems and is considered later in this uh, lecture, in this chapter of this lecture. The assumption is rotationally be stated as the sixth assumption above allows the use of a mathematic a mathematical function termed the velocity potential phi. The velocity potential phi is a, a scalar function whose gradients, i.e. the rate of the change of phi relative to x, 
and z coordinate directions is two dimensions where x is horizontal and y is very, uh, vertical at any point in fluid gives the following velocity vector for horizontal we have u which give us actually in if we wanted to give the correct one it's minus round phi over round x we should put that here and w for vertical is minus round phi over round z but here because it's an introduction i didn't mention that i didn't put that in next slide we see the wave generation mechanism an effective factor in design that we consider if we consider this is a profile of one wave and is approaching apparently to the shoreline because it's not movement it's very slightly but they have rotation you see that if you have a particle here the particle moves and they are rotating at deep water around a circle Therefore, let me divide what is deep water, what is not deep water. If you see here, this is D from sea level up to the seabed. If we call D, which is water depth. And if you consider D over 2 from here to here, half of that, if this is D over 2, For the water depths over d over 2, for example, if I continue this line, comes here. From here toward the sea, we have d greater than d over 2. The height that we have. And from here toward the shoreline is, sorry, I should write L over 2. I made mistake here. I, I wrote very fast. I write L over 2, the wavelength. We compare water depth with L over 2. If D is greater than over 2 in this, uh, for example, side, we have deep water. If D is smaller than L over 2 in this part, we have shallow water or shallow and transitional water. You see, we divide later. First zone, you can say deep water. For the other zone, second one, which D is less than L over 2, you can say on deep water that is has two zones transitional water and shallow water we we'll see later on that therefore you see that now if we consider here is uh, deep water the particles of water are rotating about a circle you think that the water goes to the, for example, shoreline. No, it's rotating. The effect, you see that the movement is there. Long term, a little has movement toward that, but not. Generally, they are rotating. And at the surface, we have big 
circle when you go near to L over 2 they are small circles here there are a lot of small circles that in cone this is like is this see that it is like a cone in this cone when the particles are near the surface they have bigger circles when they are near the l over 2 d, d over 2 they are smaller it continues up to here one the zone is changing from deep water to transitional water in this case the bubbles or the circles that we have at the in this level they are touching the seabed here the wave touches the seabed when it touches that the reaction that effect of seabed on the motion of the wave change the form of circulation or the bubble from circle to ellipsoidal shape these are ellipse you see these are ellipse why because this effect of seabed let me read a little change a little uh, phase wave generation mechanisms and effective factors in design and analysis of structures on the wave loading and also sea state because we have different sea states wave height wave period what are the distribution of them progress procedures of wave to our shoreline which is shown in the figure wave prediction methods for shallow and waters are issued here shortly therefore if i wanted again to divide the season i divide in two zones one let's consider the blue one seawater just you see this d h over l2 if you consider here here it touches the seabed therefore we divide two parts one part up to here and one part after here after here we have the effect of the seabed on the wave we have sedimentation in the deep water we don't have some sedimentation but here we have and sedimentation is a big issue when you design a harbor you design a harbor your breakwater is very good you constructed every very good but after 10 years five years it will be full of sediment the water depth decreases. The ships cannot enter the uh, harbor. Therefore, sedimentation should be studied carefully as well, especially somewhere that they have the movement of the um, sands or sediment. Okay, let's see next slide. In this slide, you will see that wave characteristic prediction methods based on equations of different proposals one of them the oldest one is stevenson that is very simple and then it was something that important and used a lot and in u.s corps of engineers they developed a lot and give very good figures equations etc based on the it calls smb we can say zeverdrop monk brit schneider brit schneider is from netherlands and the others are you know 
some of them working with them. There are some PhD students, there are some colleagues, you know, and then, and then the other one is Pearson Moskowitz, especially a spectrum of Pearson Moskowitz is very uh, famous. Hasselman and John Swapp. What is John Swapp? There is some uh, spectrum that used and it's abbreviation of Joint North Sea Wave Project. Therefore, they call that Johnson. Can be found in reference one, my book, and reference three, US Army Coastal Engineering Center. For more information, just for your kind attention. In next slide, you see the validity of different wave theories for different conditions what is the wave height what is the for example water depth and consider them and we use the validity of the wave theory the graph for finding validity of wave theories in different water depths and for various environmental condition is given in this figure this Graph is prepared by uh, Lo Mahote in 1969. Still, you see that is more than 50 years, 51 years ago. But it's still valid and everyone used that. Let me show uh, and then give anatomy of this graph to you. First, you see in the vertical access the value h over g t square what is that h is wave height g is gravitational acceleration and t is wave period in the horizontal you see d over g t2 or g t square d is water depth and why we divided by g t square? Because we wanted dimensionless parameter. It gives us better. We don't use any unit here, or any unit system is valid. Therefore, in summary, here in the vertical views, actually the effect of h. And in the horizontal, we see the effect of D. What is H? Is water high, wave height. What is D? It is water depth at location. Therefore, this is one. The other thing that I wanted to highlight for you is the graph is divided by three zones one is below this height below d is less than zero zero four l therefore water depth is less than four percent of wavelength or in other term, you can say what is the value of d over g t square that you can find here. This is one zone. I say zone one. Actually, this zone is shallow water. Therefore, zone one is. And you see another limit which is here. And if you see D over L is zero five. As I mentioned you, D water depth is less than half of what a wavelength. Therefore, for greater than this one, 
for this zone three, I call that. For zone three, we call deep water depth. Have deep water. And for the zone between these two zones, we have zone two. This is called transitional water depth. I write just transitional. I, okay, this is transitional. Okay, you continue. This is transitional. Transitional. Therefore, for if we have transitional water depth, the wavelength should be between 4% up to 50% of wavelength. If greater than that, it is up to here, it is deep water. Less than that, shallow water. This is one thing. And when we say D, over L is 0, 0,5 or whatever depth is less than half of wavelength, we have some value here for D over GT square. I think if you cannot follow here very well, the figure is not uh, clear, you can open your lecture note or the file or my book or my paper, one of my paper, at least it has, I think significant wave height like that. Therefore, you can see there and follow that and you calculate. Therefore, it was about zones that we saw. This is the water depth condition. Is shallow, transitional, or deep water. The other thing that you see, there is a big part under this curve this is valid for a theory, linear theory. Not only valid, this is the best condition for that. If you apply here, it's better than Stokes and the stream function, etc. This zone is very good for a theory condition. And you can follow for which water depth you have, and which h over gt square you have h you have which height and which uh, water depth this is a some other thing that we consider you see the condition of wave this is non-breaking wave and this zone is breaking wave and the uh, interface between break and non-break is this one this line is written breaking limits is written here which is based on solitary wave theory you see we apply this value later for rough estimation of wave height when we have breaking it says that if h over d is 0 0.78 This is limit between breaking waves and non-breaking waves. Therefore, for calculating uh, the wave height in breaking, you may simply calculate HP equals zero seventy-eight.
times d. This is the thing. So for in, perhaps in exam, you see that if you calculate HP, the simplest one to estimate is this one. And then, Now let's see more. If the condition between H and D, we arrive to this zone, you see conoidal theory matches very well with condition. If we come here, somewhere around here, this steam function for wave uh, order is the best. If you are in the breaking or the limit of that or shallow water, solitary wave theory. But when you approach to the deep water here, you see that we have Airy is valid. You can go to Stokes second order, fifth, third order, fourth order, fifth order. What is the difference between stocks two, three, and four? You see, the difference is height. When you are in uh, deeper water or some conditions, the depth is here, no problem. It's deep water. From here to here is deep water. All of them are deep water. But the height increases the order of the stocks theory. The validity of Stokes fifth order for high value of height is more than the validity is more than the second one, and even more than fourth one, third one, etc. Therefore, you see, you can how you can calculate and the water condition and which theory is valid. For example, is if given to you. H equals, I don't know, 5 meters, which is 5 meters. And D equals, I don't know, 10 meters. Which wave theory first? Which wave theory? And what is our wave water depth condition? We calculate based this one. H, we calculate H over GT squared. T is given, period is given as well. For example, I don't know, six seconds. This is 10 meters. You calculate H over GT squared. You calculate D over GT squared. Imagine you found some value here. For d over, for example, g d square, and you found one value here for uh, h over d square. You horizontally continue here, and vertically you go up. At this point, you see which way theory is valid. You see that here a stream function order four is the value, the best one. If you have one value of D here and one value of, for example, H here, H over D square and one D over H T square, you go up and you go horizontally. Okay, you see that the Stokes third order is the best. I hope the explanation is enough. Now let's see more. One example by real values. Example. For the following data, find first 
the appropriate way theory. Which one is valid for us? Which one is the best, the better? And also see what is the water depth condition there. T H is given five meters, T given six seconds, and water depth is given 47 meters. The wave height, five meters. The wave period, five seconds. And the water depth, 47 meters. As I mentioned first, we calculate H over G T squared. The G, you know, is famous. Gravitational acceleration. And five is given, five given. Therefore, you find a unitless, dimensionless value H over G T squared. We calculate similar to that for D, divide the water depth 47 over G, T, don't forget the square, and you find some value about 0, 02 or 0, 0192. You go to the graph and you find that Stokes fourth order is valid and the water condition depth is deep water let's try he is right or she is right or not or it is right or not therefore in the vertical axis it is about two percent in the horizontal axis is about zero two or zero ninety two Let's get back to the slide, to the slide of the figure. Let me erase this thing and let's see. For the horizontal, it was about 0, 02. It was something here, I think. For value of d over gt squared. Or vertical, it was something about 2%. Pay attention. The horizontally, it is in the logarithmic scale. The differences are 10 times different. And in horizontal, the same. Therefore, about 2% is something here, about here. Therefore, we had one value here. If I, it's not easy to move horizontally by this mouse, imagine that I am going there horizontally. And vertically, I'm going here. We see the intersection is here. When the intersection is there, it means that the phone value is correct because here I can see a stock's fifth order. You say no, let's see. You remember which place? which I erase here, you see that we found here the value that we have. Therefore, the answer was fifth order. Therefore, we calculated the value of h over gt square d over gt square we went to the graph and from graph we saw that stokes fourth order is valid and is the appropriate weight theory and the water depth condition is 
the father. Let's go and see another example. This example, as I mentioned you, it is about the, uh, what is the maximum wave height? Is one question always. Okay. For a water depth given 10 meters, water depth, D, what is the maximum wave height? This is the question. Look, please remember that the maximum water depth you can calculate, it simulate everything, is wave height, is a breaking wave height. What does it mean? If the height of wave increase, because when wave approach from offshore to the shoreline, it heights by shoaling, it increasing. What increase, 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 if it was not breaking phenomena, theoretically, we should have an infinitive value of wave height at shoreline. It's impossible. It's inverse. It's less at the uh, shoreline, at the, for example, land. What is the decrease the wave height? It is the breaking wave. You have seen the breaking wave effect at sea. When you look to the surface of sea and you see some white forms appears on the sea level or some white bubbles or some like forms, they are white, not blue. These are the effect of breaking wave. We have their bra uh, breaking wave. Therefore, when we say maximum, uh, for example, wave height, if we have breaking condition, it's very important. If no breaking, not. With the breaking condition, we say that H max equals HP. Therefore, we, we assume that we have the breaking condition. H max equals HP, which is breaking, and H max. I, I told you from solitary wave theory, the limit between non-breaking and breaking wave, it was 0.78 E. Therefore, we multiply the 0.70.8 times 10 meters, we find 7.8 meters. That's all. Let me uh, go back to the slide and show you where I found this value. If you see in this slide, this is the value. This was the limit line. Between breaking. Actually, after this line breaking a start. In this area this, in this area we have breaking but here is the limit of that the starting of that so you see that we have 0 0.78 okay because when we get back let me erase these values it's better, otherwise later when you study, you mix that. You rewatch the, for example, the video, the recorded lecture, you will mix it. You know, you see this example and the other one. In next slide, we see different wave height. What does it mean? Wave height is not constant, varies with time, with the condition of the wind. In one place, one day is we have zero wave height, it's smooth, it's very calm sea. Other wave is stormy, we have, I don't know, 20 meters wave height, 
the other day five meters, two meters, what we can do? We perform an spectrum from them. And we can classify as some wave names. For example, we call something significant wave height that is mostly used for the designs. For design of a lot of structures, I told you for breakwaters, all system it was significant wave height, they changed to H10. And there is the average wave, there is average height of top 10%, average height of top 1%, and the highest. Highest is unique, is one. And depends on the return period of time. We designed the offshore structures for 100 years return period. It means that if you live 100 years and during your lifetime, you see you, it is recorded just one wave height of, for example, 55 meters in North Sea, that's the wave height for return period of 100 years. And you should design the, your building for that. I told you, you say, why my platform I designed for 25 years? Like, what? why you should design for 100 years return period of wave? It's very clear. Whereas during these 25, suddenly that big one comes. Which big one? The big wave ones. That each 100 years we have once one wave height we have what comes suddenly for this structure therefore we designed for 100 years return period now let's see what is relation between different wave heights this in this example we see if hs which significant wave height which is called h Top 30%, also the average of top 30%, which is called significant wave height. It is given 5 meter. Okay, you calculate what is H max. If you have one value, you should calculate the other. What is H10? Average of 10%, top 10%. H1, the wave height of average height of top one percent first we have one table here which this table is found by the rally distribution and it matches with the statistic and a spectrum of wave height we have calculated here from Raleigh distribution, that is, we have in the probability. It says if you take HS, significant wave height one, average height is less than that, is 0 0.64 one. Average of highest 10% is 1.29 times of that. Average Top or highest 1% is 1.68. And the highest one is less than two times of that, is 1.87. But I saw the Schneider with an other spectrum, it says 2.1. Change that. But this is based on the Rally distribution uh, formula that you have seen in the probability. And it matches with wave height distribution. That we use that, and everyone uses that. Okay, let's calculate first H max. H max, when you go to the table, you see one value of 1.87 times 1. If HS is 1, it is the base. This is 1.87 times of that. 
Therefore, I can write H max equals 180.7 times HS. Therefore, we multiply 1.H times 5 is 9.33. This is max. In the similar manner, we have H 10%, which is, let me, someone is entering. Who is entering? Jean Pierre. Jean Pierre, this connection it has, I think, most probably. Therefore, let's continue. Here, you see that we can calculate H10 as well by multiplying 1.9 times 1 that we have here, or HS. We find this one for the H1, similar to that. And for each average, again, similar to that, for each average, we have this one. Therefore, if one is given, one of these heights is given, the other one can be calculated from this table. That's all. In this next slide, we see the Pretty-Schneider equations in application, how we can apply that. These are very famous and used by a lot of people. I have used in designing harbors and even some uh, condition of um, marine bridges, etc. for con in calculating, I have used the Schneider equations. Bridge-Schneider equation for prediction of the wave height, which is shown by H, abbreviated by H, and wave period, which is T, which are the two main characteristics that we need to design the other things, along with the water depth and the water depth condition, and also with the fetch length, we can calculate wave height from this formula and the wave period from the other. What is fetch length? In my book, I have given the one plan, you can see that. Imagine that we have at sea and there is a zone. This zone is under the wind action. We have wind here. This zone you feel if you are, your boat is here, your ship is here, you feel the wind. Out of that, no wind. Therefore, we call this one fetch. Therefore, fetch is a zone which is under the effect of the wind. This is fetch. And we call from the beginning up to the end the distance between two points from the beginning and to up to the end. We call this one fetch length. This is fetch length that we show by F. And from here to here is which width that we show by W. Therefore, you know, when we have fetch, when we have the water depth, we should find wave height, wave period, considering one other important parameter, which is wave velocity. Wave velocity is very important. Shows us is it stormy, is it calm or not. Everything should be related to that. Therefore, this is wave velocity. 
Now, in the old formula of Bresch Schneider, that is SMB, Zevel Drop Mind Bresch Schneider, they use directly V. But in the new one, this one, this is a little new. Why new? In this formula, it's very important that it consider the difference between temperature of water and air at sea. For example, at summer, it's hot perhaps at air, less hot or in or at the sea. If water depth temperature is 18, the air is 45, the difference make a role in the calculation of wave height and wave temperature. In summer as in the winter the same. The old formula didn't consider this parameter of temperature, but new formula it considered that. Now let's see what are these. If u is given, the velocity of wind is u. And how we calculate u? Actually, starting with u10. What is u10? Wave velocity measured at 10 meter above the sea level. What does it mean? It means if you are, you are in a super tanker, in a ship, that the height of that over the sea level is 10 meter, and you are measuring wind there, because all the ship, they measure the wind velocity. You measuring the wind velocity there, they considered in the formula, uh, the height over the seabed is 10 meters. At that point, they are measuring the wave velocity. Therefore, it seems that U10, which is the wave velocity at which uh, height, 10 meters above sea level, on the deck of, for example, a uh, ship. Here we have U. You multiply a factor RT that I introduce you how to calculate from next slide from a graph, and you find one U And you put the U here by a power of 1.23 times 0.71, you find U A. U A is called a stress velocity, for example, wind velocity, a stress velocity. Awesome. Wave stress, like that. And then when you apply UA here, UA here, UA here, and UA here, in the same manner for T here, here, here. And also, when you wanted to estimate the duration of the wind, T lowercase, T small, you apply here and here in the formula. This is, therefore, we started with you. Let me change the color. We started with U10 measured at the deck of sheet. We calculated U. We applied U here. We calculated UA. And we applied the UA in the formula for the points. This is the effect of wave wind velocity on wave height, wave period, and the duration of wind that we calculate. Parallel to that, we apply the water depth D 
here, here, and also we apply F, which is fetch length. We apply G, gravitational acceleration of the air. We find H, similar to that one T, wave period, and also time duration of wind blowing. I hope it's clear. Now, the only factor remained, you should know what is RT. What is RT? RT, you can see in the next slide, which is given a graph based on the work of Rezio and Vincent, Jean-Pierre knows, Vincent, not Vincent. Perhaps you say Vincent, but it's Vincent, doesn't matter. What is that? It has two axes. In the horizontal axis, you see the AC temperature differences. In the vertical axis, you will find RT. And RT here is one, we have above one and under one. But we follow the curve. We should follow this curve. How? Imagine that you can calculate AC temperature difference. You see TA. This is air temperature minus TS, the temperature at water at sea. If it is given minus 10, it is it's winter, it's clear. Huh? It is air is has less temperature, it is winter. You have minus 10 here. You follow this line and you find and you have received to the you have achieved received to the curve from this intersection of the line and curve you horizontally continue and you say okay therefore for me RT equals RT equals something 1.8 for example. This is 1.8. This is one example. Therefore, you can calculate if TA is given, temperature of air and temperature of sea water. You can calculate the differences. Apply here, you find RT. I hope it's very clear for you. In next slide, instead of applying the formulas of Brechneider, it's given graph to you. And so I find this formula that you saw. Before applying, let me get back to the formula. If you see that here, the you have here Ton hyperbolic, tangent hyperbolic, it's not normal tangent. Be, be careful huh? when you apply in the calculator, you should use tangent hyperbolic. And here you have tangent hyperbolic, tangent hyperbolic. Don't forget that this is not normal tangent. And I was shocking when I heard in last year in class. Hi, Tim, and some students says never we have um, 
uh, even Nevin, uh, etc. Never we have applied and heard tangent hyperbolic. You say what you have, uh, for example, learned in the advanced mathematics. They have tangent hyperbolic, sine hyperbolic, the relations, a lot of equation like normal uh, tangent, sine, etc. But it is in the Neferian uh, digits and then based on that and difference. Therefore, this is pay attention on that, please. I am sure you have seen that. You are very. Uh, high-level students, therefore, all of them are done, but sometimes they forget, they say we have not seen. I am, I don't know, perhaps they are right here as well, this is nothing in this form. Therefore, in next example, uh, in next slide, you see the formula is here. This is the formula for shallow water because Brett Schneider given for different uh, water condition. This is wave height for constant, it's not even considered a variable constant matter depth, but this is for shallow. And this is formula for developed. C. What is the TV of C when the wind generate or create the wave on the fetch at the end of fetch and for a enough time duration of generate the wind wave we have developed C. At developed C we have this condition and also for other conditions that we have three different formulas from Schneider, they applied all of them in a figure. Therefore, we see the result. The other one, this is H, and all of them are H, but this is for this line. This is for the other line. This is give some uh, area here and some area the others. They have applied everything and it is so we can see the result of that. I don't know why it cannot be uh, highlighted. Yeah. Okay. What is how we can apply this one again like Mm, the other things that we had, we can apply, calculate <coughs> the value <coughs> h over gt square, the ua square, gh, g, if it's a small scale, you cannot see that, g times h, h is wave height. G is gravitational acceleration over UA that we calculated based on U and U10. Power two. This is, we apply here the value. The other one is GF over This is GF instead of H, we have F. And for the other one, you have GF, not H, this is F. GF over <coughs> UAS square. Okay. Once you found the value of uh, given in the horizontal and vertical axis. For example, you found some, no, here. 
imagine that you have found one value here one value here again horizontally you move and vertically you move you want one point intersection between horizontal and vertical therefore you see that you should follow a curve you remember uh, please remember this uh, point I want to erase and show some or, or with another color perhaps therefore when we are here we follow this uh, horizontal line or oh, this curve it continues this is the curve that is continue you know this is the one curve therefore we are on this curve and we come and see what is the value given here this value is actually Mm, the value of gh square again and we find from that the value of uh, h therefore it makes I don't know if we got or not I think it's clear Therefore, you follow these curves. There are groups of curves, and you find the values. You should test. First, you calculate by condition that you have from the different uh, formula. And pay attention. When you say shallow water, developed water, deep water, you should check the water depth and calculate D, if you have the D, you should compare that with L over 2. And over, and also L over 25. And you say it is transitional or not. Actually, L over 25, you remember it was 4%. The other was 50%, 0.5. This was zero five times L, and this is zero point zero four times L. Between these two values, it was transitional water. Bigger than, greater than 0.5L, it was deep water. Less than this value, it was shallow water. You remember the Lomote graph. Therefore, this is another one that I wanted to highlight you. Here again for shallow water, developed water, for constant water, for this is different values, continuation of that graphs. You see here it starts with some value. And this is the other one, the water height, etc. And this one, the combination of T, ah, sorry. Therefore, let me highlight that one. The first one here, you found, uh, it, the mode is changing. Yes. The first one, that is this one. Yes, this is this one. You see here, we calculated H for the first figure. In next slide, you see similar, but here we calculate T. 
period wave period with the same approach in this slide you see the combination of those two you see t and c if you pay attention it's very small but these full lines for example this one written here 0.6 meters for example this one is written 1 meter there are groups of curves you see that that they are from left to right they are solid lines this give us h therefore this give us h but you see there are let me change the color there are some uh, other lines that they are also solid but uh, thickness is less perhaps we can see or not but the unit is clear for example this line is shown to s it is to second so it's period wave period of and this one for example right let me consider one of them this one shows us 2.8 second therefore you see a lot of lines that shows you t and in the others they are showing the h how we calculate that uh, we have in the vertical in the vertical we have ua as i told you it is wind stress function it's called wind stress function Therefore, here you have UA. As you remember, we calculate from U, and U was calculated from U10. U10 was wave velocity at a level of 10 meters above the sea level. Then we have here U, and in the other axis, in the horizontal one, We have here just fetch. Directly the values, not the, for example, normalized one, not divided by gt squared, etc. And here, if you see, fetch length is given in kilometers. Here you see fetch length in unit of kilometers and the whole uh, u u here is in meter per that is the velocity, therefore it is meter per second. This is the metric system, unit system. Therefore, the unit of this one is meter per second, the other is kilometers. You have fetch, you have a UA, you find one point from this point you find two curves from one of them you find t 
and one of them you find H. Therefore, the output of this graph is wave period and also wave height in meter and in second. That's all. I hope you got the point. Let's go to next slide. In next slide, we see formula of Schneider for another condition. Brett Schneider formula for pre uh, prediction of a spectral wave height, which is shown by HMO, peak spectral period, which is TM, and duration of wind, which is T, for a limited fetch length in deep water condition. Therefore, if we see, we see the first one was for shallow water and then limited water but this is for uh, deep water first this is for deep water condition when it says for limited fetch either the fetch is limited or we have two mountains here or two islands here, I don't know. One island here and we are talking about something between for fetch from here to here is limited. It's not open sea. It's first limited. But if you don't have uh, other formula, etc. You can, for estimation, you can apply this one as well. Again, here you see that we find here HMO, which is called a spectral wave height, and we calculate TM, which is a peak spectral period, you will see that they have relation with TM max, etc. 0, 0.95 is, you see that. And you can find the wind duration. When fetch is limited, most probably fetch is governing. But when time is limited, where is open sea here, open sea, but the fetch is limited. We have two hours wind, 10 hours wind, 24 hours wind. But here when we have fetch limited, the fetch is limited, the duration is not important. If one hour comes from this land, goes to the other land. Therefore, the governing thing is fetch. What is open sea is, the, for example, this distance between island to island, shore to shore is too much. If means wants to go from one side to other takes, for example, I don't know, take 25 days. If you have wind of 10 hours, 10 hours is governing, the minimum governs. Because of that, we calculate T for comparing with the effect of H. Which ones govern? T governs or F governs, H governs. Yeah, we should check that and balance that. In last slide that we see inshallah today, you see that we have the Schneider formula for 
fully developed wave case. What is that? I mentioned you when you have a fetch. When you have a wind here, and wind direction on that with velocity, etc. Here you have a small waves. Here it is developed. You have bigger waves. When it goes at the end, it is not fully developed page and even it continues out of fetch over the fetch you feel the wind if you are on a boat or a ship out of that not but here this is fully developed wave when we say fully developed wave it means that we are at the end of the fetch here this is fully developed page. In this condition, we calculate HMO from this simple formula. There is not effect of fetch, not effect of just only the UA, the wind stress function that's related to wind velocity, that's all. And TM, peak period, for example, maximum peak period, a spectral period again ua you find that t also the wind duration just depends on ua nothing else it's very simple this is very simple in the graph you saw this one in the graph it was combination of different cases for shallow water constant water for developed one or deep water and then everything was there Therefore, I hope you have learned something and you enjoyed the lecture. I want, if you accept, go to the first slide and overview very fastly the things that we reviewed. Today, we have started to see wave theories and different wave theories and applications by some examples. It was the lecture that we follow today. Therefore, we saw the topics, wave theories, Fritz Schneider equations, for three different cases uh, shallow water and constant water depth for deep water and for fully developed water three different cases and in the British Schneider formula the most important thing is in addition to the water depth wind velocity and also the fetch length it considered it is considered the difference between temperature of the air and seawater. Temperature, that's, it affects a lot. We have, I have tested for the Caspian Sea and for Persian Gulf. I saw the difference. The difference is important. Therefore, I recommend you, if you have later option, to use SMB, Zero Drop Fresh Schneider, Mind Fresh Schneider formula, or new or recent recent I mean I say it's more than 25 years but recent one you use the British Schneider formula that if considered the effect of difference between temperature of air and water we reviewed the different wave theories that it was airy a stokes a stream function canonical solitary wave 
and trochoidal wave theory. Trochoidal wave theory is more for naval architectures. They see the if they sketch the different forms and find that. And you can apply and use the references one, two, three that I mentioned here. These two books that I have published. One of them, at least easily, you can find the PDF on the uh, some in internet by searching internet. Turgut Sarkaya, I think you can find perhaps, but it's very difficult to apply. It's not easy. It didn't explain. It's complicated the case. And he saw two the basic equations, and this is the you easily saw that it was the profile of the wave progress to the shore that it all the motion of the sea depends two parameters it was pressure and velocity if we know that and the changes for them we can see all the movement of the sea water and wave conditions here we saw the main or basic two equations that we applied it was continuity equation and momentum equations that it was laplace equation and Bernoulli equation for this one we needed one phi function that is the velocity uh, potential for example function we didn't worry about that because it's given by different Theories, alias socks, all the given the function of the physical function. Therefore, here we show, we saw, and I show you uh, one example, some formulas for phi and the other parameters for second wave theory of socks. In this slide, we saw the assumption used for airy or linear wave theory. Again, we continued the history and then the applications. We saw how what is the relation between the uh, potential uh, function phi and velocity in the horizontal and vertical conditions. In this figure, we saw the uh, mechanism of wave progress to the shoreline. In deep water, we have the complete water depth orbital, these are orbitals. These orbits are circle, circular, but at uh, transitional and shallow water, they are ellipsoidal. Why? Because of the effect of the seabed. Here we introduce some spectrums, that it was some formulas and spectrums, Stevenson, SMD, Pearson, Moskowitz, Hasselman, John Spap, and you can use the my book and some other references. In this slide, we have one graph that shows the validity of different wave theories for different conditions of wave height and water depth, and also give us the condition of water depth. Is it shallow water? Is it transitional water or is it deep water? We saw some example how we find the validity and how we find appropriate, for example, wave theory and what is the water depth condition. We saw another example how we calculate the maximum wave height if you have breaking wave condition and it was H equals HP and HP is approximate set to the 078D. It was water depth. 
in this slide, we saw the relation between different wave heights. H max or highest significant wave height, average and max top 30%, average height, average of height top 10%, average of highest 1%, and we saw the relation between them and also there are same energy. Uh, there is some height that you perhaps you cannot use 0 8, but it's written highest of simple sine wave having same energy contents as wave train if you consider sine like a d for example this shows this slide shows the Schneider formulas for it is then it says Prediction of wave height and wave period in constant water depth, it is shallow water. Why? Because water depth affects on the wave height. Otherwise, there is no effect on that. That is shallow water. Or shallow water and transitional water. Therefore, D is has a role and is important. I told you how we calculate from velocity at 10 meters above sea level measure we calculate when we have u10 we calculate u and then by using by using the graph of rt and then apply u in uh, the other formula u v1 find, the, find ua which is wind stress function and apply in the formula find h t and t small h wave height t wave period and t a small or lower case give us the mean duration this graph from this graph we can find rt for the formula by schneider which we in, uh, use as input the difference between air and sea temperature differences and we find as output rt in this formula which is based on the Bertie Schneider formula for constant water depth against or even the developed one, the other things is shown. It is the formula is given, the graph is given, we apply and find the value of H. In next one, this one, we use the inputs and we find T period, wave period. In this slide, we find both of them, H and T. And here we saw the formulas of the Schneider for deep water for wave height, wave period, and wind duration. This one, the same formula, the Schneider formula, apply, applicable for developed wave condition at the end of fetch length or after the fetch. Therefore, uh, please don't forget, work on the paper, you should, uh, you should submit that. I don't know how we are working. And please search for internet for more examples, for more things, and try to solve some examples that like i given you or some similar. Thank you very much. You can find in US uh, Corps of Engineers, SEM, or Shore Protection Manual, a lot of examples, solved examples. Therefore, thank you very much for your kind attention. I let me check if you have any question or something. Uh, anyone? Uh, still, we have full student here. Very nice at class. Therefore, no special thing. Hostro is written. Good evening, Prof. Good evening, Hostro. It was at the beginning of the lecture. And Jean Pierre, good evening, Prof. And all dear friends, yes.
your friends. Thank you, Jean Pierre. Jean Pierre, it's me, Prof. You are right. Okay. I'm feeling now. Hostel, yes. Thank you very much. Therefore, if you have any question, please ask me. Otherwise, please take care and be safe. Don't forget to fill up the uh, questionnaire feedback and then let's see, inshallah, next week. And we will should fix for final exam as well. I will uh, inform you, I will do it somehow. Thank you very much. Any, if any question. Okay, Osama, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Osama. Jean-Pierre, thank you so much, Prof. You are welcome, Jean-Pierre. Mohat, thank you, Prof. Abdullah, thank you, Prof. Thank you, everyone. And have a good evening. I, uh, therefore, I stopped the recording here.